Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Timmons and for my digital film review, I watched the TV show Basketball or Nothing. Basketball or Nothing features the Chinle basketball team and documents their path to the state championships. It takes place in Chinle, Arizona, which is in the heart of Navajo Nation. Episode one introduces the team and sets the stage for how important basketball is in Chinle and what it means for their pride. Raul Mendoza, the head coach hired for the Chinle team, is introduced and is shown coaching the boys on the team. Mendoza was hired due to his many years of coaching experience and his previous successes with other teams. He explains why he wants to take the team to win the state title and also explains some of the goals around his disciplined co coaching. He brings structure to the game as many players play the style of res ball, which is a unique style of basketball that involves a lot of quick moves and running. Mendoza, however, wants to teach the team to play with more intention and structure and wants to develop the team's defense. He believes that challenging the team to change their style of play away from res ball is important for them to succeed and make it to state. The first episode shows some of the day-to-day -day routines of the team, as well as highlighting a few players and their stories. Josiah Hallwood is one player who tells his story about his life, including some of his athletic achievements as well as some struggles he faced as a kid, such as having an alcoholic and violent father who left their family. He explains how his mother became the sole provider for his family and then how he also takes on roles in the house as man of the house. He views basketball as not only something he is passionate about, but also as a means to get to college to be able to provide for his family in the future. The first episode also highlights Cooper Burbank, a sophomore captain for the team, who not only displays natural basketball talent, but also strong team leadership skills. Fans of the Chinle team explain that Cooper is good enough he has the potential to be the first Division I player out of Chinle. The first episode shows the first game of the season against the Snowflakes, which is the team direct, ranked directly against a... The first episode shows the first game against the Snowflakes, which is the team ranked directly above Chinle. The team pride is clear as many Chinle residents travel to watch the away game in person and cheer on their team. Coach Mendoza tells the team they must be mentally strong and disciplined in order to take the victory. Though they struggle to get the lead at first, this game highlights the importance of Coach Mendoza's skills and exhibits the dedication and hard work of the team as they narrowly secure the win over the snowflakes. Even in the first episode of the show, there are already multiple ties to topics and frameworks we've discussed in class. One significant one that can be seen is the impact of historical trauma and alcoholism on the family. As the Ball and O'Neill reading highlights, many issues facing the Native communities, such as high rates of poverty, unemployment, substance abuse, violence, and poor mental health, are results of historical traumas that Native Americans have faced as a result of colonization. Josiah Hallwood, a player from the team, explains how his father dealt with alcoholism and treated his mother badly before eventually leaving the family. This then forced his mother to become the sole provider for the family and caused Josiah to have to step into the shoes of the new man of the house. Unfortunately, because of historical trauma and potential risk factors, kids like Josiah could end up following similar paths into alcoholism or could also face more mental health issues such as depression. Historical trauma from colonization unfortunately continues to have negative impacts on families today. However, as we also discussed, the importance of resilience and protective factors in Native communities can also be seen in the first episode of Basketball or Nothing. It seems that one clear example of resilience and something that binds the community is, in fact, the Chinle basketball team and their success. Mo Draper, a Chinle resident and basketball fan, also explains how the Chinle basketball team brings happiness to the Chinle community. As any sports fan knows, having team pride is incredibly powerful and bonding for a community, especially if that team can bring home a state title. The athletic director, Sean Martin, even calls the athletes modern day warriors and explains that in their culture, the term warriors can be used to represent the Chinle people and that winning a state title would bring pride to the community. It seems that the team serves as a source of resilience for the community and gives them something to rally behind, while also allowing the community to have a shared identity and creating tighter bonds.
In our reading by David Barney about risk and protective factors, he mentions that enjoyment of school, involvement in traditional activities, strong academic performance, and caring exhibited by family, adults, school staff, and travel leaders are protective factors for men. The athletes on the Chinle basketball team luckily have school staff that care deeply about them. Coach Mendoza and his coaching staff, as well as the athletic director, Sean Martin, can be named as two clear protective factors. Martin first describes the students as his kids, and he says he treats them as such, wanting them to be successful. He explains he wanted the best coach available to help the team become successful, which was why he pursued Coach Mendoza. Coach Mendoza especially believes in this team, teaching them discipline and mental toughness as important skills, while also showing them patience and kindness. It is clear in his daily actions, such as checking in on the team or even encouraging them to look good on their game days, that he is passionate about the team and cares about their success and well-being. His dedication to the team and empathy for their experiences are very obvious and definitely make him a protective factor for the athletes. Another concept shown in the show is the issue of access to resources. Josiah explains the period of time where his family did not have access to running water or, elect or electricity. As we learned in class and read in stories from Indian country, many native communities do not have sufficient access to grocery stores and potable water, often having to leave the reservation to get sufficient groceries. This is definitely really impactful, especially for young children, and can have further effects on the health of Native people depending on what foods are available to them. The athletes in the show also describe wanting to get athletic scholarships so that they will be able to attend college. It is clear that they do not have access to the same monetary resources as more privileged people, and that basketball is, an, is important for providing more opportunities to have access to high education. The reading also mentions high violence rates, which is followed by the issue of lacking resources to address these crimes and supporting survivors. Perhaps the basketball team can also serve as a protective factor for the Chinle kids by keeping them out of gangs and having less violence by giving them something to do and a way to channel their energy into something productive. This first episode also shows Josiah practicing basketball in a hoop on a dirt field further highlighting the disparities in athletic resources that might face Native athletes compared to non-Native athletes. It is especially important to consider how these differential accesses, access to resources, especially as a student athlete, could potentially impact someone's future athletic career. And for the Chinle team, their future athletic career is tied to their potential academic career. Once again, the effects of colonization continue to be very clear, causing Native communities to face more adversity. This first episode of the show definitely connects to a lot of materials we learned in class and especially highlights the resilience of the Chinle community in all that they have faced. It is powerful to see the athletes want to succeed in school and in their sport so that they will be able to attend college and give back to their family and community who have supported them. I really enjoyed seeing a glimpse of Coach Mendoza's influence over the team and how he has the ability to bring them together while teaching them important skills that can be used on and off the court. The strength of the community identity and their support for each other exhibits incredible resilience, and I definitely want to watch the show in its entirety to see if the Chinle team can bring home the victory.